In today's lesson, we are looking at connection. When is it important to be connected? Does it need to match what you do in the downswing? Or is connection the biggest, most overriding thing? Hi everyone, Alison Davis here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you for tuning in today. Today's golf lesson is all about connection. So how we connect the arms, when is it important maybe not to be connected, how we can create what we call a stretch shorten cycle by having the right kind of connection and reaction in the transition area as well. So lots of information around how the arms and body interact throughout the whole golf swing. If you are new to the channel, please consider following or subscribing. I post videos every single week and they're all designed to help your golf and improve your scoring and your enjoyment of the game more importantly. Keep watching to learn how. So as I discussed there in the introduction, we're looking today at connection. Now essentially a connection for me in golf terms is the arms and body connecting with each other. And to stay connected would be to have pressure or compression between the arms and the body, whether it be the lead arm or the trail arm. So today we're gonna to talk about matchups and we're gonna talk about compressing or connecting the right way. So the first thing I wanna talk about is matchups. If you imagine someone like Justin Thomas, he has an arm swing that is very, very upright. So there'll be a tiny, tiny bit of connection between his lead arm and his torso when he gets that backswing because his arm swings are upright. His downswing, however, is pretty much exactly where I'd want it to be, certainly from about chest down and through the golf ball. So if you imagine we took that golfer and made him have a more connected backswing, so got this lead arm, more compressed across his chest. So more of his kind of bicep and tricep had a more engagement with his kind of pec area and torso area of the golf swing. In theory, then you'd have a flatter backswing. And you might say that's more orthodox and that's more correct. And you'd be right to think that. But then on the downswing then, with the same shallow reaction, he'd actually become too underplaying and hit the ball to the right and have bigger hooks and have big issues. So that golfer would become a worse player from having a more orthodox backswing and a more connected backswing. The second thing I want to discuss with connection really is a lot of people when they try and get connected, a lot of the drills they will do is put like a glove under the front of their arm like this. Now under the front of the arm like this, I can let my arm roll around my chest and not connect at the back and not get what I would call the correct scapular engagement and shoulder engagement, sort of pinning the shoulders back as I would turn. So it's kind of a slightly cheated way of doing things. And I want you, when you put the gloves, to put it at the back of the tricep area more so. That then is going to give us a better connection with the arm and how our body works throughout the whole swing. Now, the other thing to note within this is when people try and get connected, very often they will cheat with their body, the torso. So if I put this glove in and I think, right, I'm gonna stay super, super connected, that becomes pretty hard. So what happens then is they'll come out their posture when they're trying to do this. So they'll lose that posture shape, they'll lose their tilt. So it's important when we get connection that we also stay tilted. Now, with some players, this might well give you the look of a slightly too, what I would class as deep down backswing and a slightly too flat backswing. If this is you, thinking a connection would be the wrong thing to do. Now, in an ideal world, what would happen is the arm at a dress would have some compression. As we swing back, that compression will remain. The arm would slide up the chest a little bit, but still have some contact or compression. At the top of the swing, we'd want to compress in a little bit more as we change direction. And then the arm would spring out, and we call that stretch sorkin cycle. Stretch so shorten cycle, easy enough to say, hey? So the arm would go in and bounce out ever so slightly. And that little reaction helps us with power and speed. So ideal world, we want the compression at the start, we want the compression to remain fairly light throughout the whole swing, 
and then we want the compression to deepen or tighten or intensify at the very end of the backswing and then loosen again. Then on the downswing, we wouldn't feel too much connection for sure. On the through swing then I'd want to feel that the right arm had that connection and that compression as we go through the ball. I would certainly want to feel that. And I talk about that in my, my videos, not having the throw away, having the feel of the connection of the right arm, that for me is important. So for me, you know, drills you could use to get more connection, glove, back of the arm, glove, back of the arm. So one works more on the trail arm, one works certainly more on the lead arm. So depending on what you're trying to achieve, that drill can help both those things. You could even do a glove under both arms at the same time. Again, the danger is then, as I've said already, if the shoulders get too horizontal, you're gonna end up having a worse body action, but maybe a better arm action. So it's very important you get the blend and you feed what you need. So it has to match up to what you want to achieve in the hula golf swing, and then you get the blend to feed what you need. Those are the two key components. This video was a request from one of my viewers. So if you do have requests, please, please type them in the comments box down below or send me a personal email if you don't want to do that and say to me, I would like you to do a video on X, Y, Z. And if it's appropriate and if I can do something on it, I will get back to you as soon as I can with a video for sure. So if you're looking to improve that connection, as I said to you, the drills would do would be glove under the left arm, back of the left arm. And ideally start maybe with some smaller swings Try and feel every time you do a practice swing, measure that ground, just hit that ground every single time and get that feel of connection and the body working together. Build that up then to full swings, hit some shots, and then basically try and take the feel on the golf course. You will see some top players even grab their sleeve and tuck it in as a way of feeling this on the golf course for a real swing or practice swing. Justin Rose does this with his putting might sometimes be the trail arm, sometimes be the lead arm. But if it's something that helps you get into, a, let's say, a groove or a robotic groove or swinging the way you want to, tucking your sleeves in is not a bad thing to do. So there you have it. My thoughts on connection and how it works in the golf swing and how it should be applied depending on the golfer you are. If you have enjoyed today's video, please like and share the video. If you have any questions, comments or requests, please post them down below. Also, if you haven't already followed or subscribed to my channel, I would love to have you on board. I'd love to have you join my journey and let me help you improve your golf and lower your scores. So just hit my logo down this bottom corner. Thank you for tuning in today. Thank you for joining me at the beautiful Forest of Arden and I'll see you again here very soon.